like next week in Saturday's game with the Louisville Cardinals. We'll talk about those cards coming up next. University of Cincinnati meets the University of Louisville, two independent programs that were very similar to the way Miami was, say, five, six years ago. Coach, Miami wins the national championship, I think, three years ago. And prior to that, a couple of years prior to winning the national championship, their foundation was young. It was just developing yeah, a lot like Cincinnati is now and Louisville. Well, Steve, there are a lot of similarities in the programs. Uh, I made the alluded to point yesterday that they've got the ocean, we've got the Ohio uh -huh. River. But uh, I kind of uh, like it here. Being a major independent, uh, they've built a strong base in Miami and had good recruiting years and stability in their program. UC is going to do the same thing someday. Indeed, and Howard Schellenberger, who was the coach at uh, Miami for so many years and did such a great program there, is now at Louisville. We'll take a look at the highlights of last year's football game that UC won 40 to 21. And coach, you really played a great, great ball game. Well, this was our homecoming game last year, and then it was a big game for us. That's a Bodine to uh, a Darden pass there for a touchdown. Now, those people aren't with us any longer, but uh, uh, once again, here is a. Uh, An interception, an interception by the, interception gag, in the end guys. zone, yes. I'm sorry we put that on there. I don't want to watch that anymore. We yeah. scored a couple more touchdowns, and I understand Reggie Taylor just had a great game. Well, Reggie, you watch him in the highlights. He gets a, finds a way to get in the end zone, and he'll be pumped up, ready to go this week. And uh, uh, this is uh, Bodine back to pass, and I believe this is uh, over here. He finds, uh, once again, that's starting in, in the end zone. Bodine had a good day uh, against Louisville last year, and but it's a whole new ball game this week, and uh, Louisville will be ready to play, too. Watch this little guy, Reggie, breaking tackles. It's One, great run. two, three, four, five, into the end zone. Reggie, save that one for this week. And you can just hear the crowd roaring because this guy has put on a show wherever he has gone. 30 to 14 at that time, and we do it again. Again, it's Taylor to the right, and this is a screen pass, and uh, maybe we better put these plays in for next week, too. That's the same screen play that... Uh, Al McKinney ran. Well, the final score was 40 to 21. And coach, I know we had talked quite a bit uh, after yesterday's ball game about this being a must football game. And I say must because you've lost four in a row. This could really get those guys' excitement back in. Well, we're going to approach this week of practice that way. Uh, I think our players need a shot in the arm. We need some confidence. We're going to be playing a football team. Louisville uh, believes they can uh, beat Cincinnati this week. And we're going to have to play our best football of the year. We have not played our best football game this year, and uh, it's getting down to that time of the year when we need to. Do you show them tapes of last year's game? Look how we handled them last year. Do you say, this is our opponent this week. They're very much improved. Please take them seriously. Well, I don't think there's any doubt about <laughs> taking anybody seriously because I think the important thing for us is not to get our chins down and start feeling sorry for ourselves. Uh, we've played some good football teams the last four weeks. And uh, we've played some good football. The Temple game, we had good efforts. Uh, we just need to get some confidence back and some enthusiasm back, get some people healthy, and uh, we'll be ready to go. The leadership is developing on this football team. Two wins a year ago, and the four already, or three already this year, going for number four next week against Louisville. And you can watch all the highlights of that football game next week right here on the Dave Curry Show. <laughs> has been brought to you by Pepsi Cola, General Bottlers of Cincinnati, and by Cincinnati Gas and Electric, the Energy Service Company, and by Central Trust. Dave Curry and the Bearcats out to break a four-game losing streak on a wet night in Louisville against Howard Schnellenberger's Cardinals. Next on the Dave Curry Show. Channel 5 Sports presents an inside look at Bearcat football with University of Cincinnati head football coach Dave Curry. The Dave Curry Show, brought to you by... Pepsi-Cola, General Bottlers of Cincinnati, and by Cincinnati Gas and Electric, the Energy Service Company, and by Central Trust, your financial center, and by Provident Travel, managing travel everywhere under the sun. Good morning, everyone. My name's Red Pitcher. I'll be with you the rest of the Dave Curry season. And we start off on a positive note. The Bearcats go down to Louisville, Kentucky. And Dave, you whip up on the Louisville Cardinals. First time in 10 years that you beat Louisville. 
Well, it was a big win, Red. Needless to say, we had to uh, do some things earlier in the week. We had a good week of practice. I thought our players rose to the occasion, and tomorrow we're enjoy uh, today we're enjoying a big victory. Well, the weather wasn't very good, but nonetheless, the players demonstrated their mental toughness. They adjusted to it and played very well. I thought we hit awfully well, and uh, well, we scored a lot of points and, and kept them out of the end zone. They didn't score a touchdown. I thought the best part of the football game was our intensity and the way we uh, uh, tackled and blocked. Well, they had the uh, chin straps buttoned up, and let's take a look at the highlights as the Bearcats go down to Louisville to take on the Cardinals. Here's the opening kickoff, and one of the keys, Dave, was to get started in the right direction against Ernest Gibbons. Well, Gibbons was leading the country in the kickoff returns, and right away, Delano Kelly goes down and makes a great tackle on the 20-yard line. You forced them to punt, and lo and behold, a roughing the punter. We went after the punt. We felt we could get one, and uh, sometimes it comes up the other way, but we put great pressure on their punter all night. Ed Rupert's a strong-arm quarterback, isn't he? Well, the thing that impresses me here is the great hit by Sawyer. Uh, both defensive backs uh, had good hits there. Sawyer put him away, and he went to the sideline. And he look at Sawyer's play there. Here's a good uh, goal line stand down here. They pop one through, but catching causes a fumble. Sawyer recovers the ball. But we have an offside penalty, and now they get another chance at it. Louisville driving inside the five, and again, a nice defensive play by the Bearcats on the outside. Well, watch this play. There again, Sawyer, uh, no tackers over there. Uh, Richard Rhodes had big plays. Uh, our defense has really gotten tough down inside the five-yard line, and that shows a lot of team pride. Louisville's on the board 3-0, and the Cats uh, demonstrating their running game. Robert Williams. Well, Rob Williams makes a great effort. The ball pops loose. That's Roosevelt Mukes' best catch of the year right there. Big <laughs> play. Good blockout position. Here's McCoyne hitting uh, Joe Heiss on a quick out. and This was a good control pass, and uh, Heiss makes a good catch, a good game. Again, Robert Williams, and you really featured him in the offense. Well, Rob Williams is really coming into his own this year now after his uh, preseason injury, and he gets better, ran real hard. Here's a post pattern to Mukes. So we dropped the ball. We had a good chance there to make uh, an easy six. Tough angle for Baroni here. You know, the thing that hurts here is we go 79 yards and don't get a, a point in the scoreboard, and a lot of young teams would start to panic. But, uh, we don't. We do come back. Here's the defense here. It's Niehoff. Alex Gordon comes over and makes a big hit. Louisville moves the ball a lot here, Red, but at the same time, uh, we're running to the football and, and hitting hard. That takes its toll, as we'll see in the second half. Again, the Bearcats' pursuit is good. Well, that's Alex Gordon all the way from the other side. Again, uh, Alex played well last night. Louisville continues to drive. They're leading 3-0 here, and there's a key play. Well, there's Brad Notacker making a big play and causing them to go for a field goal. They pop one through. The battle of Italian field goal kickers, Cerrone and Baroni. Well, we're now down by uh, six, but again, we do come back. This is a McCoy to Heist hook up here. And as you see now, we begin to move the ball down the field. This is Reggie Taylor taking a draw up the field. That's three, four tackles Reggie's breaking, and he did run hard all night. Excellent play calling, really setting up Louisville. Well, here Dan McCoy steps up and lets it go, and there's Stargell running under. Look at this catch. Great throw, great catch. Never breaks a stride and runs into the end zone. That's the longest touchdown reception of his career, 68 yards. Well, this was a big play for us because we needed to, to make big plays last night. Good pressure on Rupert, though, on uh, most possessions. Tony Catchings deflects the ball there. Again, we... Uh, uh, well, he seems like he has a long time to throw. We've got some good pressure here. That's J.H. Caldwell, the fine freshman, making a big sack. Here's a quick pass, and uh, Vince Carricker comes up and makes a good play. That's on their uh, great wide receiver. Look at this. We've got the ball, and we just miss it. It goes right through his arms. Good pressure on the punter, and they end up uh, getting a good bounce. At this stage of the game, you're up 7-6. to six, uh and continue your same passing to Joe Heiss, who had a real good game. Well, the short, flat, weak side, we took advantage of a little bit last night. Here's a quick screen to the left, and uh, Alan McKinney, uh, freshman, gets better, takes a good hit here, and hangs on to the football. Here's McKinney to his right. And there he goes down the right sideline, and we were getting a good block there out of Jody Malone, made a key block, and uh, that's Alan McKinney's big touchdown. Definitely demonstrating his ability. Again, the defense doing a good job. 
Well, the thing I like here, again, is we, we are hitting. We're flying up and around the ball, hitting people. And while their receivers caught a lot of passes, uh, uh, they didn't do much with it after they caught it. There's Rupert, and this was a big reception for them. But again, we come up and make a hit, and their receivers knew our defensive backs were on the field. And here's another nice play because uh, it keeps them out of the end zone, Sawyer. Well, Sawyer deflects the ball, and uh, they're forced to go to another field goal. When you keep them from scoring touchdowns, it really does help. That's the only way we close out the first half. 14 to 9 the score. The Bearcats demonstrating they can move the football and stop Louisville in the red zone when Louisville has an opportunity to punch it in the end zone. Dave, what do you tell the troops when you go to the locker room? You have to feel pretty good about the way you can move the ball. Well, offensively, uh, we did move the ball. Uh, the early series, we didn't get it in, but we had a big play and came back. Al McKinney made uh, a big play, his uh, uh, touchdown pass on a screen. But defensively, uh, while they were gaining yards on us, I still felt that uh, we were tackling and hitting hard. Their receivers were beginning to feel the, the defense's pressure, and uh, we just said to our, our football team at halftime that the game was ours for the second half. Let's go out and hit a little harder. Indeed it was. It gets better in the second half as the Bearcats and Louisville play out the final moments in the game, and we'll be back with those highlights after this. The Bearcats up 14-9 to nine at the intermission as we begin play in the second half, and you've demonstrated a balanced attack, Dave, as you approach the second half, and it starts out that way as we uh, see the highlights. Well, we start off with the football as, as the second half, and uh, we'll take a look at the highlights here as uh, we, it was important we come out and move the ball that first series. Well, Robert Williams and Reggie Taylor had the big first half as well as Al McKinney, and you start right back with Robert. Robert uh, is running better, as we said earlier in the program, and uh, he gets better. Here's, uh, he comes around the corner, makes a big block for Reggie. Reggie bounces it outside, and again, he takes a big hit. He sure is a, a big uh, part of our offense. Louisville gets possession, and uh, again, the defense right there. J.H. has just been amazing, hasn't he? He plays red very well, and uh, here's a reverse, and again, Alex Gordon slows him up. And we come back here and slow them down. Uh, that Givens was, had big reverses, and I thought the defense played that play very well. Here's a punt, and a nice return by Al. Unfortunately, a penalty on it, but uh, he shows he can bounce off the tackle. Well, he's hard to get down. He gets more confidence. Every time he touches the ball, his confidence is getting better. Reggie coming around the corner. Uh, this was a, a toss play. Here's McCoy on a quick screen. Again, this is McKinney. Making a big game, breaking one, two, that's his third tackle. All the way down, we get a face mask here, and that's a big gainer for us. Here's Reggie on a pitch play. Breaks a tackle there. Breaks another tackle there, another one. That's good running by Reggie. Back to back, that's two great plays. You can see a good reason why we want to run the football here, Red. Uh, our backs are running very well. This is McCoy coming off the secondary receiver, Greg Latham. Makes a big gainer down to about uh, I think we're down the 10-yard line here. Here's McCoy finds Joe Heiss, and he goes down to about the four. Reggie Taylor to the left here, down to the one-yard line. And here's Dan McCoy sneaking straight ahead, reaches over the second effort for a big touchdown. Go up at this point, 21 to nine with the kick, and we start the fourth quarter, and the Bearcats have the longest field goal attempt uh, uh, of the game, and for Baroni. Well, this was a big kick for Robert because he'd missed one before. The ball comes right down over the pole, and that was a big uh, field goal for him. Our offensive line is blocked very well now this uh, second, third quarter. And here again, we've got a big sack. Uh, the defense is running the ball. Uh, Steve, Howard. Steve Howard had a big hit there along with Alex Gordon. Here's a little layoff. That's catching, and no tacker comes up and puts him away. Well, no tacker, uh, splendid story there. Pressure on the kicker again, forcing him to kick the ball quickly. This is again as McKinney. Brings it back for a little gain, but again, good field position here, Red. This mukes in motion to the right. McCoy handing off here to Reggie Taylor. This was a third down play. We didn't get the first down, and we had to turn the ball back to Louisville. Look at this uh, rush here. This is, uh, again, no tacker coming across the middle. Brad, no tacker played so well at the middle linebacker last night. No tacker again, big hit. Strong safety makes a, a pretty quick adjustment, eh? Strong safety goes to a middle linebacker, and uh, 
plays a very tough addresses. That's Tony Ketchings, the outside backer there. Nice to have him back full time. Here's Rob Williams picking, and uh, Rob runs straight ahead very well, and he's a big, strong back, and I think he got some confidence last night. Here's McCoy to uh, Arnez Perry, a fine catch in the sideline. There he is, there he is, and you're going to see a lot of Al McKinney. Just a freshman, folks. I like the way shoulder pads are getting down each week. He's running lower and more aggressive. It's McKinney, and uh, there's a great example there. Uh, Al pops into the end zone. What a fine block there by that left side of that offensive line. Dokovich with that block and uh, just a nice move by McKinney. He's just a freshman. Robert Williams is a sophomore. You know Scott Tackett hugging him there. <laughs> Scott Tackett made the key block. There's an interception. John Sawyer, big interception. Good turnover for us, and uh, that certainly uh, made the, the night complete. Well, so much was made about this football game, a measuring stick they were calling it for both programs do. You really feel that was uh, the case as you went into that game? Well, I think in our case, uh, what we're trying to do here at UC is get better each week. Our young people are getting better. There's a big building program going on in our campus, all the way from construction to buildings to facilities to uh, the building of athletes. And I was very proud of our football team because we went down to Louisville and hadn't won there in 10 years. Uh, we won a football game, but we also played well, and that's what uh, makes us feel good this morning. Well, there was so much made about uh, the Louisville program and all of the things that were happening positively down there. They had coaches in our area on Friday night, uh, uh, but you have a lot of good things to say about Cincinnati. Well, I'll tell you this, there's a lot of good things going on at UC, and all people have to do is just uh, come on aboard because we got a great group of young men that are playing hard, and uh, this week against Boston College, you get a chance to play at home. More of the Dave Curry Show straight ahead. The last two weekends, we've had some good goal line stands by the Bearcats. And Dave, the subject of our goal line clinic, uh, our clinic, I guess I should say, is the goal line. So let's take a look at that. Well, we have a chance here to look at the uh, uh, goal line pinch, which you'll see a big play by our defense. Today's clinic deals with the defense on the goal line or five yard line going in. We have a defensive call called a goal line pinch. And what we're trying to do is have everybody pinch to the inside gap so that when the ball comes up the middle, we will either clog up the middle or force the defender to jump over the ball. The key to this is penetration. We must get penetration inside in order to clog up the middle. If the back jumps over the top, now we have these linebackers that jump and meet him also. All we're trying to do is stop the play by causing penetration. Everybody pinching, go line pinch, and then the linebackers meeting the ball carrier if he tries to jump. Goal line pinch, it's been effective. Here we have a look at it, Dave. Well, it's going to the left here, and here you see uh, Brad Notacker just stuffed the fullback. That's Preston in there, and of course, uh, we make a big play here by pinching underneath and everybody running to the ball. Uh, that doesn't look like a lot, but I'll tell you, each week we've got better and better at that red, and I'm, uh, there's a good pride factor down there in that defense, uh, our defensive uh, front four and then our linebackers running to the ball. We didn't see a couple of plays where the goal line pinch forced the ball outside and you had very good containment. That's right. Later on uh, in that same particular series, uh, we had uh, uh, the ball bounce outside and then Ketchings and uh, John Sawyer made a great play. Now, it used to be in the old days you had uh, coaches who uh, performed a variety of duties and you only had three or four. Maybe he, the assistant coach was the head track coach. Nowadays, you have so many coaches, I don't know if you know all their names. Three of them, though, are grad assistants, and we have an opportunity to visit with them uh, this morning, and uh, they're very important people, aren't they? Well, the graduate assistant has a special place. Uh, I started out as a graduate assistant, and uh, I'll tell you, we've got some fine young people on our staff, and I want the viewers to meet them this morning. Timmy Viox is out of Elder High School, and he helps in the defensive backfield with Tony DiBiase, there's Timmy. Well, Tim runs our service team. Uh, he's 
You notice uh, this is Jeff Fitzgerald, too. Uh, Jeff is from California, and they've got Louisville hats on. They're all Louisville guys this week. They're the coaches for Louisville, and they get our guys fired up. Nicknamed Jeff Rambo. Uh. <laughs> well, Jeff works in our weight room, does a great job with uh, stretching our athletes and uh, helping their strength program. Jeff Fitzgerald. There's Pete St. Jim, and he has, uh, what, one master's degree working on another? Pete played his football at Stanford and got a master's degree. He's uh, also taught English at the high school level. He's now getting his master's in business administration in our business school. And again, he's, he makes a fine contribution to our offensive scout team. Basically, Red, we uh, run the service teams. I help coach DiBiase in stretching the athletes and then the beginning of the drills. But basically, we run the service teams. We uh, break down the film during the week so we know what the opponent's going to do offensively. And uh, we have an offensive service team that we run all the running plays and passing plays against the defense. We try to teach them some skills over there. We do coach them over there. And uh, as far as motivation goes, we get after them. We, uh, we ride them hard when they mess up, but when they do good, we're there to pat them on the back and take care of them. College athletics has progressed to the extent that it's, it can be handled as a business. Well, as a football coach, you're managing uh, not only a coaching staff, but obviously football players as well. So the skills you learn in business school can apply there. Also, there's the possibility of furthering that to uh, athletic administration. Obviously, uh, business would come in quite handy if you're going to run a college athletic program. Dave, uh, it's so important to have those grad assistants, and I know the players really uh, get to know them well, and it's kind of a liaison between uh, the full-time coaches and the players. Well, they're fine young people. They set good examples. They're not only good coaches and wanting to go into coaching, but they're getting advanced degrees, and uh, uh, the question was asked of Pete St. Jim, why a business degree? Uh, well, he certainly answered that, and uh, the world is full of talented young people, and our campus has some exceptional ones, and those three GAs are a good example of it. How many are you allowed to have? You're allowed to have as, as many as you can carry. The NCAA has put a limit on it. Uh, we're fortunate enough to have three. You'd like to have 33, <laughs> but at the same time, uh, they set good examples, and uh, I'm very proud of our graduate assistants, and they've had an awful lot to do with our success. Boston College, next weekend at home at Riverfront. We'll be back to take a look at the Eagles after this. The first of two Eastern powers comes calling this Saturday, a 1.30 kickoff at Riverfront Boston College. But what a great way to get ready for the Eagles as that victory last night over Louisville. Offensively showcasing some real talent in Robert Williams and Al McKinney, a couple of youngsters who heretofore really hadn't been featured in the offense. Red, we had some big plays, and I think the offensive line des deserves a lot of credit. Uh, for the first time in a long time, we had two backs that ran for over 100 yards, and that certainly is a confidence builder, plus Dan McCoyne played better his, his second time out off his injury. Joe Heiss had a great game offensively. Uh, it was just a master game plan. It has to build the confidence of the young man. I think so, and then, of course, the defensively, we held uh, Louisville to two first downs the entire second half. Defensively, I thought we played hard. Uh, people are going to complete passes. They're going to get yardage on us, uh, but the best football team in the field last night hitting was the University of Cincinnati, and that, that pleased me. What a gutsy performance by Brad Notacker, a young man who heretofore had been uh, seen on the specialty teams and at safety. Well, Brad Notacker uh, went from defensive back to the middle linebacker because of the injury to Bob Leshneck, uh, but he played very well last night, as did our uh, entire secondary. One of the important aspects of the game was controlling Ernest Givens. You did that masterfully, and uh, your kicking game was superb. Well, again, we put place a lot of emphasis on our special teams. Guys like Delano Kelly, for example, uh, making the tackle, the opening kickoff. Our football players, when they line up on a special team, know they've got a mission and a job to do. And I think the enthusiasm uh, of our football team is being generated because of the kicking game. Injury-wise, will you get Bobby Leshnack back? We'll wait and see. Uh, both uh, Bob Leshnack, Matt Daniels have shoulder neck injuries, and we're going to see how it goes with them. Uh, we came home relatively healthy last night. Of course, the bumps and bruises sometimes show up a little more, but you always feel a lot better after a win. Boston College uh, summarized the Eagles for us. Well, we're looking at, uh, as mentioned, an Eastern power. Boston College has a uh, Heisman Trophy winner from last year, great tradition. Uh, this is the first time they've come to Riverfront Stadium, and 1.30 next Saturday, we're going to have a chance to play BC, and 
and hopefully we'll be ready for it. All-American nose guard and Mike Ruth, Nick Godovac, your leader on the offensive line. Good matchup there. Well, uh, they've certainly got a very fine defensive lineman. Uh, I understand he's going into the priesthood, so we're going to light a few candles, and Nick's going to get ready to block a, a great big lineman, but it should be a good ball game. Well, we want you to be there. 1.30 is kickoff at Riverfront, and we expect to see you there, the Bearcats and Boston College. Join us next week for the next edition of the Dave Curry Show. The Dave Curry Show has been brought to you by... Pepsi Cola, General Bottlers of Cincinnati, and by Cincinnati Gas and Electric, the Energy Service Company, and by Central Trust, your financial center, and by Provident Travel, managing travel everywhere under the sun. Bearcats look for their second in a row. They're home with Boston College, the Eastern Power, next on the Dave Curry Show.